In this presentation, we explore an overview of fair use and copyright issues as they relate to online multimedia presentations in PK-12 and higher education environments. Most students know that written work is protected and guidelines from the American Psychological Association, known as APA, the Modern Language Association, known as MLA in Chicago style, among other formats, suggest how authors should provide attribution to ideas that they did not create and are incorporated into their own written products. But what about multimedia presentations? How should students, teachers, and others attribute the visual or audio creations from outside sources that are incorporated into their own work? This presentation briefly describes some of the considerations for multimedia presentations. First, a distinction is necessary. Copyright and fair use are related, but they're not synonymous terms. Copyright gives specific rights to the creator of an intellectual work. What an artist, photographer, author, or other maker produces is generally protected by copyright laws. Though copyright awards certain rights to the creator of an image, written work, video production, and so on, fair use allows users to make specific uses of the works or intellectual property created by others. Students and teachers have some latitude to use the intellectual property that otherwise would belong to the creator. However, care must be taken and almost all creations must be attributed in an appropriate way. The four factors shown on this slide work together as a kind of balance. Teachers and students have some latitude within bounds to use the work of others. However, no one factor overrides the others. Just because a work is used for education, educational purposes does not all by itself permit others to use that work as part of a multimedia presentation or other educational use. For example, factor one provides educators and students some rights to use the work of others, but again, within bounds. Factor two indicates that commercial or other public use of the work may limit how much of another's creation can be used. In other words, Creators have control over who benefits financially, commercially, or publicly from their intellectual property. Factor three indicates that the greater the proportion used of another's work, the more likely it is that the principle of fair use is violated. And factor four, the proportion of work used and the size of the audience, including students in a classroom, parents, and the public at large, may have some impact on the value of the work overall to the original creator. Key considerations for teachers and students might focus on the extent to which the works they have created and that incorporate the intellectual property of others is made available online. Is the work only available to a specific class of 30 or so students, or will it be available to parents as well? Will anyone in the world with an internet connection be able to access the final product? Teachers and students should consider who will be able to see the final product or work and the degree to which that might infringe the rights of the original creator of the image, written text, or other product. Fortunately, many creators of images, texts, and other sources of information have licensed their works so that others may use it easily in their own creations. The Creative Commons organization, for example, allows creators of intellectual property to permit others to reuse, repurpose, create derivatives, and so on using a set of common attribution licenses. Creators of intellectual property decide in advance how much of their work can be used and what minor, manner it might be used by others. Five good ideas for citing and attributing the work of others that you have incorporated into your own multimedia or other presentations follow. First, always include a credit or reference slide that includes the links to images, videos, and audio podcasts that are incorporated within your own presentation. Consider creating your own photo or other image into your presentation rather than using the work of others. Simply copying the URL from a search engine image uh, query may not be good enough or for an audio podcast and so forth may not be sufficient. Find the original source and cite that original source. Use Creative Commons licenses or works in the public domain whenever possible. Include that information on your own work. If you're not sure if you may use a source, ask the owner of the work in advance 
before you use you use the work and make it public or share it with your classmates. Three keys to fair use are always include attribution information for your sources, including images, video, and audio files. Second, if you need help or want to know more about specific format requirements, ask your teacher or the writing center at your university or school for assistance. They can help you follow the format that is specific to your school or classroom. And third, consider licensing your own publicly available works using the Creative Commons licensing framework. Notice that this reference page only includes a citation for the work of others whose ideas were incorporated into the presentation. However, this slide contains the attribution information for all of the images that were used and that were not created by me. A key element of any system for citations is that the reader or viewer will be able to locate the original source. On this slide, I have included the slide numbers, the retrieval URL, and the licensing information for each image used. For more information, articles, and resources, please visit the URL at delicious.com slash tdwolsey.